In this video, I'll take a look at the Canon AE-1 program film camera. Hi guys, my name is Matti Sulanto. I'm a photographer and a Lumix ambassador. And this is Vintage Corner, where I'll take a look at film cameras. And this time the film camera is the Canon AE-1 program. And this camera and the lenses that I used with this camera, they are not mine. They are on loan from camerastore.com. They have an awesome selection of film cameras. And if you're looking for a film camera, please take a look at their website. I'll put the link down below. I know the owners, they're honest guys, and they are really, really passionate about uh, film cameras. It's a good place to buy a film camera. And now let's talk about this Canon AE-1 program. This camera was launched or released in 1981, five years after the original AE-1 without the program. And this AE-1 program and also the original AE-1 were top chart hits for Canon. They sold a few boatloads of these cameras. And one of the big selling points for the Canon AE-1 program was the fully automatic P exposure mode, which was not common back in the early 80s. Many cameras had uh, some kind of semi-automatic exposure mode, but few cameras had fully automatic exposure mode. And of course that was a huge selling point. The user only had to set the film speed and focus manually and the camera took care of the rest. And of course that was appealing especially for casual shooters. I remember it really well when this camera was released back in 1981 and I didn't like this camera back then for a couple of reasons that I'll talk about in a bit. But first I want to show you a couple of pictures that I shot on this camera on the Formapan 400 film that I rated at ISO 1600 because it's so dark in December here in Finland. I needed some extra speed. Enjoy the pictures. I hope you like those pictures and I have a second set of pictures also later in this video. And now let's talk about the features and ergonomics of this camera. The camera body is made of metal and plastic and it feels pretty solid, but it doesn't feel premium like some other Canon film cameras like the A1 or F1. But then again, those two cameras that I mentioned were also a lot more expensive than this camera. There is on the right side of the camera, there is this removable grip that makes holding the camera really, really comfortable and secure. Even without any strap, the camera feels like it's gonna stay in your hand no matter how you handle it or what you do. The Canon AE-1P is a fully electronic camera. So without a battery, it doesn't do anything. And that can be an upside or downside depending on how you look at it. I personally think that a film camera should be fully mechanical, but that's just me. This camera has three exposure modes, fully manual mode, shutter priority mode and fully automatic P mode. But this camera is clearly designed to be used as an automatic exposure camera. When you're in manual mode, there's no indicator in the viewfinder whether you are underexposing or overexposing. There is a display that tells you which aperture you should use with your selected shutter speed. But to set that aperture, you have to take the camera off your eye and set the aperture because you can't see your selected aperture either in the viewfinder. So using manual mode on this camera is a little bit more cumbersome 
than on most cameras because most cameras have some sort of indicator in the viewfinder that tells you if your exposure is correct or if you're underexposing or overexposing. And I like manual exposure with film cameras. But on this camera I was using uh, the P or S modes most of the time because the manual exposure mode is so cumbersome. But here are some more pictures that I shot on this camera on the Formapan 400 film rated at ISO 1600. Enjoy! I hope you enjoyed also the second set of pictures. And let's talk about some lenses that I had with this camera. I had a really really nice uh, Canon FD lens kit with this camera. I had the 24mm f2.8, 50mm f1.8, 100mm f2.8 and then 100-200 to f5.6 zoom lens. All the lenses um, are really solid, nice film lenses and they deliver excellent quality. The 24mm is a little bit soft in the corners wide open, but it's really sharp when stopped down a little bit. And the 50mm also is a little bit low contrast wide open, but that also gets really sharp when stopped down a little bit. The 100mm is an excellent lens, sharp at any aperture. And I can't say much about the zoom lens, I used it a little bit, but the f5.6 aperture is just too dim at this time of the year, even at ISO 1600. Um, I couldn't shoot much handheld with that lens because no image stabilizer and the shutter speeds were just too long to be shot handheld. Those four lenses would cover pretty much any imaginable shooting situation. Very nice lens kit, all in all. All the lenses have the Canon FD mount, which is a little bit uh, like tricky to use uh, if you have never used it before, because um, when you mount the lens, you don't rotate the lens, you rotate the ring around the lens mount. And um, it takes a little bit of getting used to that, but once you get used to it, then it's just fine and very easy to use. Those newer Canon FD N lenses, they work uh, like n most normal lenses and you rotate the lens when you mount it on the camera. And now the reasons why I did not like this camera back in 1981 when this was released. The first reason is the manual exposure mode, the way it works. And I explained it, and I explained it, it earlier in this video. And another reason was that the, uh, this camera doesn't have aperture priority mode, which always uh, ha has felt more appropriate to me than the shutter priority mode. But nonetheless, I enjoyed using this camera now uh, many, many decades later. But still, if I was buying a film camera, I probably wouldn't buy this camera because I use uh, computerized digital cameras pretty much every day and when I pick up a film camera I really want to feel that little bit nostalgic, mechanical, fully manual camera in my hand. But I still think this is a very good camera for someone looking for maybe their first film camera or film camera in general. And uh, there are lots of uh, Canon AE-1 programs on the market and it's easy to find one, just make sure um, that the camera is in good shape when you buy it. And I recommend camerastore.com if you don't have any other place, any other good place to buy a film camera. And the price for a camera body like this is around 250 euros or dollars, depending on the condition of the camera. 
and there are also a lot of lenses, a lot of Canon lenses available for this FD mount, and most of the lenses are also pretty reasonably priced. I hope you enjoyed this review of the Canon AE-1 program, and please check out uh, here my other film camera reviews. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one.